Let's move on to the next topic, and that's going to be our guest co-host, Angela Cherie. So, Angela Cherie, yes. is this a truth, a lie, or are we talking shenanigans here? It's truth and shenanigans, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's truth in the in the, in the fact that it's it's a real thing, but it's shenanigans, uh, and you'll hear why in just yeah. a moment. So, Sainsbury, I guess that's how you pronounce it, is the second largest grocery store in the UK. So it's very popular, very well known, um, and they are receiving a lot of flack um, from their, I guess, people who shop there and just people in the area in the UK. Um, they're not receiving flack for bad produce. They're not receiving flack <laughs> for you know. <laughs> Being, having a lack of, of, of items, a lack of toilet tissue and stuff like that. They are receiving flack and outrage over a Christmas ad. A Christmas ad about some daggone gravy, okay? So the problem isn't about Christmas or gravy, but the public took issue to the family and the advertisement uh, being a black family. Okay, now this family isn't portrayed cussing each other out and, and twerking on glass and standing on furniture at a restaurant or committing unlawful acts. They're just, you know, talking about Christmas. The the daughter calls the dad and she's looking forward to spending time with the family and, and the dad's proud of his little gravy and people are mad. Uh, supporters or shoppers are saying that they are, or consumers and Twitter gangsters, uh, they've threatened and urged a boycott against the store, uh, citing that the commercial or advertisement isn't inclusive and it is very divisive. How, I, I don't, do y'all see this? Do y'all hear this? So my question to you before I get into my rant <laughs> is, uh, will healthy Black family narratives uh, ever be something that is normalized? They're not doing anything wrong in the ad. There's nothing, you know, disrespectful. Why is this such an issue? Well, let's show the ad real quick. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Hey. Hey, it's me. Oh, hey, love. How are you? How's mum? Yeah, yeah, well, we're fine. We're all good, we're good. I'm getting so excited for Christmas. Christmas! <laughs> I just really hope I can see you. Me too, I've literally, I cannot stop thinking about mum's roast needs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about my gravy? What about your gravy? Hey, you, what's going down? Dad, not the song. Gravy boat, gravy boat, coming in town. Oh. It's not any old shit. Just take a seat. Dad. It's still a bit scrummy and oh. still safe bits. <laughs> <laughs> How does mum put up with you? <laughs> Your gravy is pretty good to be fair, and I just really want to be home for it. So my gravy is the best. Dad. Honey! She says my gravy is the best! <laughs> Honey! <laughs> I mean, that's such a great commercial, actually. We can't even have gravy, y'all. We can't even <laughs> have <laughs> gravy. <Christmas. laughs> can't even. All right. Well, let's start out with Lizzie Enders. Um, can, can, we, we'll can, can we just have that, that positive Black narrative without people getting upset? I think yes and no. I think that... Um, the, the common good is okay with the black family because I, I don't believe that everyone in this country or everyone who is non-black in this world is racist. However, with that said, there is a driving faction, especially in this country, but, and I'm not very familiar. I mean, I've been to the UK, I've been to London, I've been to England, um, but I'm not very familiar with the demographics there or with the cultural climate there. Um, but so I can only speak from the perspective of this country, if you will, but there, and we've seen this in the, in the past four years, we've seen this a thousand times over mm. with, you know, Trump Fuhrer in the white house. Yeah. But I think there is a driving factor that is intimidated and very cautious and very anxious about a thriving progressive black family. And it's seen as a threat by a certain people because mm -hmm. a positive, powerful black family can't be subjugated. It can't Good be point. walked mm -hmm. on. Before. Good point. And I always challenge people to pay attention to advertising in this country. Just even for the holidays over the next few weeks, look at the ads that you see on television. 
Notice the number of black families that you see where you see two black parents and black children versus interracial families where you have one black parent and then one parent who is of another race. And I, 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 I honestly, I would be a hypocrite if I was standing here speaking out against interracial relationships. I have dated more outside of my race than I have dated in. I believe love is love is love, but I also believe that representation is important. And so when you put out there that the black family, a black man and a black woman as a unit is something that is an anomaly, that's something that isn't the norm, but the norm is a black man and or black woman with an other is the norm, then we have a problem because you're trying to change the perception of what the black family is you're trying to change the representation and so that's why this ad kind of doesn't surprise like it's shocking because it's so innocuous we talking gravy for the holidays gravy. <laughs> gravy for the holidays um but in the same vein again pay attention to the way blacks are in this country are still what our images are in the media and it's not as progressive as a lot of people would think. Rob? Um, one of the comments that flew by from Mike Winter was that Brexit is loosely tied into some racist uh, sentiment. Um, I will not loosely. say but, but that there has been a rise of nationalism and populism in the last few years internationally. And I think that this feeds re very well into it. As I was watching the commercial, this was a family Christmas holiday and they're just doing normal things. Fantastic. But the fact that so many people are feeling triggered and threatened by this, just, it, it, I find it shocking it, it, to, that this is still happening at, at this level. There's always gonna be internet trolls and people are going to hide behind their digital personas, their digital shields and spout off all kinds of nonsense. Uh, that they wouldn't necessarily say to your face uh, because there is that false electronic courage. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm with you. It's, to me, it's this should just be a normalized thing. And I'm glad that you brought up the, uh, the mixed family commercials, Liz, because then that makes it more palpable for everybody. Everybody's, oh, okay, just kind of drink it in. But you're right. I mean, we white families have been normalized in media forever. Uh, so why should a family of any other race be threatening to anyone else? It's, if anything, it should speak volumes to your society that anyone can kind of edge out that little slice of happy and just be, quote unquote, normal. Yeah, I, I want to um, I want to point out there's a few people online. So I see Jennifer Rocks on uh, TikTok and Zoo Infinite. Uh, Jacqueline Robinson said, remember the brouhaha about the cute Cheerios commercial a few years ago? And this is actually what I was going to bring up. It featured a biracial little girl concerned about her daddy's heart. And he was, uh, he was black and the mom was white. So it was an interracial, um, it was a interracial couple with a, a, a mixed child. And there was like a huge issue with that. Me personally, I, I wasn't surprised. I mean, there, there's just this contingent of humanity that believe they are and should be superior that their way or, or, or what they know is the right way or the only way things should be. You know, the way I see it, nobody has, has a right to, no, nobody has to accept me as black or white, Lizzie, or gay or straight. I mean, <laughs> or, or, I'm not accepting you as white. I'm not accepting you as white. You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> the important thing... And it's like, what are they talking about? Neo's white girl. It's no, that's not. No, I've watched. I've watched. <laughs> but you don't have to accept it. It's fine. That's your I choice. Don't. If I'm, if I choose to be gay, straight, <laughs> if I, if I say that I'm tall, it doesn't matter if you believe I'm tall or not. What matters is that I believe I'm tall. <laughs> no, that's reality. You are not tall. <laughs> like, there's reality. I'm tall compared to ants. So anyway, <laughs> back to my point. I'm just saying no one should be admonished for any of their differences. You know, that's really the important thing. 
you know, let people do what they want. And this is similar to what we were talking about earlier. You know, you know, and, you know, what's wrong with showing black faces and, and, and white people having to find a way to relate to that? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we, that's the way we, you know, become a, a real society, you know, a true society where we respect one another. Angela? Yeah, I always say that. That's super important to me to respect each other's differences. I don't have to agree. But I, I, I think that there is something to be said about respecting it nonetheless. Right. Um, the interesting thing about this ad to me is it was a three part series. OK, it just wasn't this you That's know true. ad that yep. was put out. It was a three part series. So there were other ads put out with people of the Caucasian persuasion of which no one said anything about. And so it's not that I'm surprised, but I'm sick of it. And I have made it a point to, you know, for myself and, and, and I get given myself this responsibility to call it out when I see it. Um, it people are never happy. Like you said, the, the Cheerio, Cheerios commercial, they had something to say about that. In this particular instance, people said that it should have been a mixed family to be inclusive to everyone. Mm -hmm. But when we see beauty ads and we don't see ourselves, nobody standing up for us and saying, oh, you should have put more, you know, women of color. We are our own allies. But with, with when it's the uh, on the shoes on the other foot, everyone has something to say. And I think the thing that makes me so sick about this is if this was a commercial about uh, criminal activity and violence, uh, because we know how the media perpetuates and depicts black men and women uh and, and families in, in 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 media if this was about criminal acts and violence and, and something of that nature nobody would be saying nothing mm -hmm. they oh, wouldn't have God. nothing mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. not even just criminal acts and violence if it was a hip-hop commercial yep if we were shucking and jiving and entertaining shucking and folks, jiving, huh? it would have yep. been fine with that as well like we needed to stay in our lane. You can't be a happy couple, a normal family. You need to either be criminalized or you need to entertain us. You got two lanes. And I think what's yeah, it was Angela. interesting too is that the, the black father was kind of the focal point too. So that's oh, yeah. volumes because we heard about the mother, but you didn't really see her, and it wasn't really the black father, yeah. the black male being depicted as a father. What? As a husband? What? He's in the he home. What? Yeah, there was one of those. One of those comments, I just want to read it off real quick. It says, just wondering whether in their portrayal of a typical black family, the male adult is actually the father of the children. Quite often it isn't the case. I mean, really? It did not, it did not, you know, perpetuate the stereotype that people actually believe. I grew up in a two family home. And when I grew up in a two family like, home. It's like, I did too. It's like, oh my God. It was a dysfunctional two family yes, home, but it was a two family home. <laughs> okay. okay, let's tell the truth. But it, but but I had my father there, and my father is still in my life. And I think that it is, you know, again, it's not something that I'm surprised at. It's not something that is, you know, going to end anytime soon. Um, but I just think that it's so sick because if you come to my home on Christmas, it's gonna look a little like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I do believe that representation matters. Yes. And I don't think that it's fair. What What are we saying when we only? when we can only put out or be in agreement with uh, narratives that have, you know, mixed families. What does that say to my little girl? You know what I'm saying? Who, you know, that's not how she's grown up. Her her parents are, you know, both black. So I just think that that is, I, I'm just sick of it. And I really was, I was shocked at the level of disgust um, and, and how people yeah, even try to make this. Horrible. Yes, and how people even tried to make this about the Black Lives Matter. Oh, this 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 ad was in support of Black Lives. How do you get that out of some gravy and, and Christmas? Stop it! <laughs> I'm so sick of it was just a company who who wanted to reach out to their audience. But then people want yeah. to ask why Meghan Markle wanted to get the hell out of Dodge. Okay, mm. people want to know one, why she like I can't do this anymore. They're yeah. coming for me. They posted an ad in a newspaper of my child as a monkey. That's what Meghan Markle had to do. And she's biracial. That's what right. my Meghan Markle had to deal with. So yeah, yeah it, it's, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, it's crazy. I think my frustration is the hypocrisy from people in general, though. There, there are so many black people that look for the right to be who they are. Um, but they're also against interracial marriage or homosexuality or you know, they're gay people that fight for their place in the world, but then they criticize other people's differences or, 
Of course, there are white people that you know might fight for religious freedoms, but you know, of course, race and gender freedoms is a no-no, right? So the problem is everyone wants to be free to be themselves, but it's it's a rare few that actually want the same thing for other people. But I think it goes back to what Angela just said in the previous segment. Freedom comes with minding your business. <laughs> True. If you are not True. involved with what other people are doing, how they're living their lives, who they're sleeping with, who they are fraternizing with, socializing with, then you really don't have time to be racist. Yep. Right. You're and why does it matter to you so much? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any right, last thoughts, Angela? I just I just have to applaud Sandsbury because they did release a statement to say that we want to have a retailer that is all inclusive. So kudos to them. And I hope that we can just learn to mind our business again and, and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. We got a bunch of comments online. I'm trying to see if I can follow them here. Um, Jeanette Brown says it should be a mixed family uh, to protect fragile white people and ease them into sharing their stage <laughs> while still... <laughs> While still centering on white skin, BS. Uh, Roka says, I, I, "I can't wait until we are just family and not capital B black family everywhere in the mm -hmm. world uh, that doesn't define people by color." Um, uh, Mike Winter says, "Um, objectifiably verifiable facts don't matter." Neo question mark sounds like your boy Alf's logic. <laughs> Uh, Alf is for those who are in the know. Alf is Donald Trump. That is Alf is definitely Twitter. not my boy. <laughs> my, Alf is you got the pet name for him, Mike. <laughs> all right. Um, that is it. That's all the comments I see. Anybody else see anything comments online, real quick? Nope. All right. Cool. Yeah,